Hi everybody, let's get started today with making a stretched canvas so we can paint on. Below in the class, you see we have these uh, pieces of lumber, ones are called a quarter round. This is what we attach to the wooden plank, which is pine, and that quarter round is basically a, a one-fourth of an entire circle. That quarter round, as you can see, we put it flat face to the other edge of the plank. And that's going to allow the canvas, when it's stretched over this frame we're going to build, it prevents the canvas from touching the, the armature. This way you don't get an impression of that armature on your painting while you're painting. So it creates a sort of a little bit of shallow space um, to keep it off the frame. I'll just give you a sense of that. The planks we have there in the classroom are six feet long, and you'll get a six foot long piece to make your stretcher. We're going to use some wood glue to attach the quarter round piece to the, the six foot plank there and put a good amount, not too much because it's going to squeeze out. Typically, we would be in the wood shop and we'd be using a, a nail gun with an air compressor to uh, shoot some brads or nails through the quarter round, attaching it. Uh, we would still use wood glue and wood glue is really the main uh, bonding agent. But we're not going to use nails here. So we need to make sure we put plenty of glue. We're going to clamp down the pieces together. And we need to wait about three hours, at least three hours, for it to dry completely before moving on to the next step. When it's dry, you can go ahead and get your plank and move to sort of the second station we have set up with a miter saw. And this is, again, we'd usually be in the wood shop. But because of COVID and social distancing, we need to, um, we need to work around that. And let's see. All right. So I'm going to make my measurements on top of the quarter round. Um, measure in a couple of inches from from the edge of the plank. And I'm going to I'm going to measure out you know 20 inches or so. So I'm going to have um, put my dot there on the ruler next to the ruler on the plank. And then I'm going to go into my miter saw box kit or whatever it's called. All right. So I'm going to put it up here against so, you know put edge to edge. And want to make sure that your cut is on the on the outside marking point. You don't want to cut inside your measurement. You want to cut on the outside of your measurement. And that blade is maybe about a sixteenth of an inch, so that's why you want to be on the outside. You don't you don't cut in. All right. So I have these little black rods. These rods you sort of screw into the hole, and that puts pressure and tension along the plank, so it, it keeps it from moving on you while you're sawing. Let the saw do the work. Remember, we're not using nails to attach the quarter round to the plank. So if you get really rough, and uh, it could potentially remove that plank from that, remove that quarter round from the plank. Again, making sure my saw is on the outside of that measurement. Tighten that that rod. Create tension so it doesn't doesn't move around. You might notice that as you're cutting, when you get to the very bottom of the piece of wood. It helps to loosen that rod just a little bit to continue cutting. The saw tends to get sort of caught in between those two pieces that you're cutting. And this is just me kind of going through the motion of continuing to make my other three pieces of my frame, of my stretcher. Let the saw do the work. Just put a little bit of pressure as you're, as you're cutting down on that wood. And as always, there's a hundred different ways to do something, right? This is just my method. You can find different ways to sort of mark your, your wood and measure. So I have my four pieces there. I get some sandpaper, lightly um, sand those rough edges, any splinters you might have. This method is not a perfect method. Of course, there are different ways to go about doing this. You can even buy your stretches from a store. When you use a staple gun, use safety goggles. We have an electric staple gun. And we also have the uh, non-electric staple guns that are in the classroom. We're going to use the same set of arrows. Uh, pay attention to that size of arrows. We need it to be long enough to staple through a couple pieces of wood. And we're also going to use the same staples to use for your, your canvas. The electric staple gun, the staples are uh, put in place from the bottom. The other staple gun that I showed, the staples are going to be put in from the rear side spring loaded in both cases. So I have my triangles there that you see that they're available in that white box that was shown earlier. Cardboard box underneath the table. I'm going to put some glue in between the 
the stretcher arms and then underneath the triangles and then staple away. You want to let that dry too before you get going. If the measurement of if the dimensions of your stretcher on any two sides are getting closer to two feet, you want to put a sort of an additional brace attaching those and that prevents your, your stretcher from, from warping on you or being a little bit skewed. Put that in place, you know, if it's, if it's too tight, you need to maybe sand away or, or saw again to make it a little bit shorter. You don't want to press too hard because, again, it is glue mainly that's holding these, these, uh, this piece together. Use a hammer to, to hammer down those staples that are sticking out. You don't want to give a canvas opportunity, opportunity to snag on one of those. Here's a canvas. We have a chest that you can use to get some out. When you're measuring your canvas, you want to make sure that you have enough that sort of folds past the stretcher bars a little bit. That will help you grip the canvas and stretch it to pull it without straining yourself. So I have it on the table here. We're getting ready to stretch. You want to flip it to make sure that's the underside. That's the underside. That's the inside of the canvas, right? So you want to flip that and make sure that's against the canvas material. When we stretch, we're going to go around in a circle doing one to two at a time. Starting the center, center, center. Now I'm pulling kind of a little bit more. I'm stretching now. Now I'm pulling it with a little bit more force. One staple on either side, one staple on either side. The longer sides, eventually you can do maybe two at one point. You want to try to keep an even flow, keep consistent amount of staples all throughout. So if you have a longer side, maybe double up um, every once in a while. I only do that once here. Folding the corners. Everybody has their own preference. You know, I sort of tuck mine in and fold around that side trying to have not not have any wrinkles or or you know creases it's up to you you can do what you want i think of it as sort of like wrapping a present or maybe folding uh, making your bed this one i'm having trouble so the staple was too close you want to try to give at least a couple inches um, as you're stapling so you can more easily fold at the corner i'm going to remove the staple using a flathead screwdriver make sure you're careful you don't tear that canvas you can also use pliers. There's, those tools are located in the classroom near my wooden cart. Going through the motion, stapling, folding, stapling, turning over, and that's about it. It has a pretty good bounce to it. It might have a few wrinkles, but once you start gessoing, that gesso will help to shrink the canvas material. If you still have some wrinkles, spray some hot water on the backside. That can help. Do at least two to three layers of gesso, the more, the merrier. It's going to help prevent soaking in your acrylic paint. That's about it. That's a stretch canvas. See ya!